This is a Max MIDI magnet. It says, caution, extremely strong magnetic fields. <laughs>
I add the water. Wait a couple seconds. Maybe shake the tube a bit. And then add the 10x dBPS. Shake the tube a little more. And if you have a lot of red blood cells at your lysine, you'll see a large um, kind of amorphous blob form of all the broken cell membranes. We have a little bit of it here. And you can see that. It's a little bit of broken cell membranes. So after I've done the lysis, in case there's been any mistake in pipetting, I like to add a few mils of media to the cells to make sure that the osmolarity is correct and we don't continue any more of the lysine. Okay, so now I have my lymphocytes um, in the single cell suspension again. I've done the red blood cell lysis and I'm going to spin them down and pellet them. Before I do this, I'm going to count them on the hemocytometer to determine how much antibody we need to add for the CD4 positive T cell negative selection kit. Okay, so now I've spun down the cells in max buffer and you can see that the pellet is a lot more white after we've done the RBC lysis. And I'm going to do a negative selection for CD4 positive T cells. So I'm going to pour off all the media, all the max buffer that I spun the cells down in, and I'm going to label with the biotin antibody cocktail, which is step one in the negative um, selection for CD4 positive T cells, and then I incubate in the refrigerator for 10 minutes. Okay, so my cells are done with their initial incubation. Now I'm going to add the antibiotin microbeads and put them back in the refrigerator for 15 minutes. So for this particular cell separation, we use an LS column from Militeni Biotech. And we, what we're going to do is put it on the magnetic holder and prepare the column by running three mils of max buffer through it. I'm going to open the column and place it so that the prongs face inward into the magnet. Now I'm going to add the max buffer to the column, and you should see it go down the LS column and start dripping out at the bottom. Don't worry about the column running dry. Um, the surface tension of the liquid will keep it from running dry until you add your cells. Before you add your cells, it's important to let the max buffer drain completely through the column. Okay, so after the 15 minute incubation with our antibiotin magnetic beads, um, I've spun down the cells in max buffer. I'm going to pour off the buffer, resuspend them in a buffer amount that's appropriate to our cell um, count. So you'll have to check your Militeni protocol for that. And then I'm going to apply them to the column that we just rinsed with max buffer. So now we're going to add the cell suspension to the column. And because this is a negative selection column, we're going to collect the cells that flow through. And those should all be CD4 positive T cells in this case. So now I'm going to wash the column with 12 mils of max buffer. And again, we're collecting the elutin, which should contain only CD4 positive T cells. So now I'm going to spin down the CD4 positive T cells, resuspend them, and then label them with the appropriate dye that I'm going to use for T-photon imaging. I'm also going to take a small sample of the cells that I've purified and label them with anti-CD3 and anti-CD4 and run them on fax to make sure that I have a clean population of CD4 positive T cells. So here's a look at the cells that we just spun down. This should be a population of pure CD3, CD4 positive T cells. So I've just shown you negative selection for CD4 positive T cells using the Militeni Biotech kit. We're going to adoptively transfer these cells into a mouse and use it for one of our own two-photon imaging experiments. Good luck with your own experiments. <laughs>